Hello, everybody. I know you're doing fantastic. That's the kind of God we serve. He is a able, magnificent God. Those of you that are here around, I got a cord that, I, <laughs> that I'm sitting on. There you go. I am extremely excited about tonight because we're gaining ground. We are taking ground. And I bless those of you. I did send the link out. Hello, hello. Give me your comments in the house. I am so glad to have you. I'm so excited about the word and what we're teaching and and we got more this is a second of this is the second class of two of five weeks i committed to five weeks to really teach on this and welcome don oh pastor don and shirley and they're coming in and bernice oh my god darling oh my god you know why i'm excited because i realized if we if i can just get one or two people to capture this and begin to shift some things around i believe the lord the father god will be pleased so those of you that are in the um in the backstage is i'm going to get get a, the teaching out and then i'm going to bring you in like i did last week so i want to welcome those of you that are coming in just be patient. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. I can't see who you are. It's crazy. You got 10 spots, but Bernice, hello. I'm going to bring you all in. I want to get started because I, I can't tell you how excited I am. I've had a great day today. I honor. First of all, I want you all to know I am married to the one, the most wonderful man in the world. It, we're in our 50th year, 55-0. And when he walks in the door, I get excited. That's God. That is so God. And in between, we're talking. So that's a blessing. That in itself is the work of Calvary. Amen. So we've got some really good stuff. Now, let me tell you, this is probably one of the most important classes you will ever have when it pertains to the kingdom of God. It, I'm saying this, and I am so thoroughly convinced that there are those that have an ear that realize that something that is built, that we have captured, that has flooded the earth, is flawed. So last week, so let me pray, get the class going, and I want you all to ask, any question you want to ask. There's no stupid question. There's no silly question. And if I don't have the answer, we're going to consult the Holy Spirit. Shirley and I love you, girl. Thank you, God, for these prophets and apostles and emerging apostles and apostles that don't know they're apostles. They're builders. So, Father God, tonight, I thank you for this magnificent opportunity. Lord, I thank you for this team god that has come on here tonight because they want to find the right thing they want to improve they're willing to shift they're willing to come in alignment with your divine purpose and god i bless you and i thank you tonight i bind and i eradicate i destroy every plot plan of the enemy every sensorian spirit every monitoring spirit that do not want this to be done I bind you up. I send you to the abyss. I forbid you to operate, function, or interfere tonight. I loose the blood of Jesus over this time. I loose the blood of Jesus over this purpose and the season in which we have gathered tonight, God. I pray that you would stir up those that are listening with questions. I pray that you would give them an ear and give them an understanding, God, that will go for the generations. We thank you, God, and we bless you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say glory. 
I, I, I am so glad to be able to do this. And, you know, when you talk about the apostolic, and I was telling somebody, I got really excited because, you know, every time you go on my page, that's all I'm talking about is apostle, 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 apostle. And I was telling my daughter, I said, you know, I remember the time when I was traveling from the, from the West Coast to the East Coast, to the North and to the South, teaching on the spirit of Jezebel back in the day when there was not a lot of literature written. And um, my kids asked me, so mom, is there any other women in the Bible besides Jezebel? <laughs> But God had given me an assignment to plow that field and to release uh, 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 that. So I feel like that about the apostle and God will send those that will encourage me, encourage what God is doing. If you stay focused, stay in your lane, stay where God has called you. Um, and I, I shared and I won't go into it, but this word is getting around the world. It is going into hundreds of thousands of ears and they are hungry for the apostolic. So you're on here because of that. You you could, I mean, there's a lot of Bible studies to be in. So I honor you, hear me, I honor you. And I, I bow my knees as the apostle Paul says, because it is not quote unquote, the popular thing. So I'm going to go back and do a little review of the class uh, we did. Let me put that, make that bigger and me smaller. There you go. Okay, we already at the end. I meant to start at the beginning. I'm just going to kind of run through what I did last week. Realize that every teaching that I do is is recorded, and if you want a copy of it. I can figure out, Don or somebody will help me figure out how to send it to you. I sent one out. I'm doing classes in various little parts of the world. So I record everything. And so with me recording this, I will be able to send it to you because my goal and my heart is to get this word into the hearts of God's people. So here's the thing I shared last week real briefly about how my husband and I are both apostles. We were ordained in 2006. And we didn't understand what kind of apostle we were. So we were bumping heads and a few bodies are, are probably here and there across the United States because it was a divided unity. We didn't mean to be divisive, but we didn't know what kind of an apostle we were. We didn't know who had the pattern, who, you know, we talked about last week, the different kinds of patterns. But I saw where there were apostles and prophets. There were apostles and apostles, Apollos and Paul. There were multiple apostles. Jesus had 12. But if you don't know what kind of grace and what I call grace mantle, I'm talking about the office of the apostle. Then as you're moving in the church, whether it's your husband and wife, or whether their other apostles have been squashed, have been uh, called rebellious because they begin to operate in their gift as an apostle. And because the apostle that was there or the pastor or whatever office they were in, they didn't understand the types of apostles. And so they didn't know where to place them. So I'm here to tell you that there are prototypes and there are patterns out here. It's, it's very rare that you see them because it's usually one person that's trying to house all six of the mantles. And that is not, that's only because they don't understand that if you're an apostle, you're going to reproduce after your own kind. It's almost, I would, I would be safe to say that it's impossible to be in an apostle and there are not other apostles around you because you're going to draw apostles prophets are going to draw prophets and so if if there's apostles in your organization or if there's apostles in their midst it's because god sent them there to help you build but if you don't know that there's different kinds of apostles you will be threatened ignorance destroys god's people he said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and so god wants to get knowledge in you so you can understand not only you understand, but the people working with you need to understand what kind of an apostle you are. 
So you say, I'm an apostle. My husband said he's an apostle, but people didn't know who to go to for what. So I started with this last week and I'm going to whip through this because we're going to go into the second part. So this is just review that they're on the bottom of every building. When we talk about buildings, I see the, the fivefold ministry as a hand, not, I mean, as a house, not a hand. And I think in the 80s or the 70s, when this revelation began to teach on the apostles, they saw the hand. And most of you that have studied apostolic ministry know about the hand, the thumb being the government, the pointy being the prophet, it points you in the direction. The middle finger is the evangelist that gathers the people. The, the guard is the pastor who guards the sheep. And then the little finger is the ground that gets into the deep parts of the scripture. Well, it's a hand, but you don't see the foundation. You don't see where the foundation, you don't see where it's connecting each other. He gave some to be apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. And I'm, I'm whipping through. I know I'm going fast. So I begin, as I begin to study the word, I see it more of a house. So Let's put the hand in the house, okay? So we're not, I'm not knocking anybody's revelation, but I see it as a house. And so that's why when we use the word apostle, people get offended because they don't understand it. And when you don't understand something, people usually regurgitate it. But it's synonymous with the word builder all the way from Abel to Zechariah. Jesus said, you killed them. And the ones you didn't kill you persecuted, your, your sons built sepulchres and buried them. So they've been killing apostles since Abel, the first children of, of, of Adam and Eve, all the way to Zechariah. So we know that apostles, how do you kill them? One of the ways is to act like they don't exist or act like you don't know what they are. Act like they, you know, oh, I'm not into the names. Yeah, you are, because you just had a soda and you knew it wasn't quinine. It wasn't poison. So you are into the names, but it's only when it comes to apostle that people are not into the names. You wonder why you, you don't want to name who's an apostle because it keeps confusion. And here you're going to find out that it creates another pattern. Okay. Now, when you look at this screen, you see the convener. Well, let's see. I started at the bottom because I wanted to make sure that the pattern, which Moses talks about, in the New Testament, Old Testament, it speaks of the pattern. It speaks of the blueprint. It speaks of what God wants to build. And so I put it at the bottom because there is an apostle in any organization that carries a download from God. Blueprint, master blueprint, master builder, general contractor, whatever you want to call them. That's the closest without being exactly the same that I can use to help people understand that there has to be a pattern that's been signed off by the Holy Spirit, initiated by God, just as he did with Moses. Moses had the pattern, but Bezalel built the house. But when God got ready to, to bring Bezalel in to build as a master builder, he went to Moses to tell Moses that he was gonna use Bezalel. So God honors his structure. God is a God of order, he's a God of structure. So when we look at the types, as you study the scriptures, you see that there were different kinds and there's different anointings. I believe that an apostle can move within the six, but I don't necessarily see how he moves in the apostleship and goes into um, the pastor, the teacher, and the evangelist in and out of there. They all have an ability to teach, but they don't move in and out of the office because they're foundational. And that's why I put foundation at the top. So the apostles are master builders. Paul said in Corinthians, he said, I, the grace has been given unto me as a wise master builder. I build foundations. Okay. And he said, those that come after me, when you, when I've laid the foundation, be careful how you build on it. What is he saying? He's saying that everything is connected to the foundation needs to be apostolic and prophetic. If we're talking about kingdom, kingdom is bigger than the local church. It is the vastness of what God wants to do. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So the master builder is responsible to be connected as Bezalel was with Moses 
to find out what it is that he wants to build, okay? The whole purpose of a house, of a building, is that God will habitate it. So we have to accept the fact right now, okay, if I'm going to build something, I'm going to build something that God wants to be in. There's two things you can build. You can build something you want to be in, or you can build something God wants to be in. And I'm going to show you in the word of God, it is not optional. When you're talking kingdom, you don't, you can't come on site. I talk about my son who's a superintendent here in Georgia and Swanee, and he's sitting in a trailer with the blueprint and all these guys in these little orange vests are around putting this building together. He doesn't have on an orange vest, but he has the pattern. He has the blueprint that's been signed off for the city. It's been signed off by the owner of the building and also the owner of the company that is responsible for putting this building together. So he says to me, he says, mom, on Friday, all three of us get together and they check to make sure it's exactly the way the plan says before they get a check. So if they don't get a check, then those that are uh, working don't get a check. So the master builder, so God will give you the blueprint, but he never intended for Moses to do all of that work. He said in 35th chapter, the 31st chapter of the book of Exodus, he said, see, I have filled Bezalel with the spirit, understanding, wisdom, and all kinds of skills. But then in the 35th chapter, you see where Bezalel began to teach. So apostles teach others. They, they draw other builders. That's why I said, you can't be around an apostle and you, you, you upset because somebody come in with an apostolic grace. It's because you're one. It's a confirmation of your apostleship. And most people, because they don't understand the different types of apostles, they kill them. They kill them. They run them out. And they, when they can uh, become a son. So we're going to get in the next one is the ox anointing. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Every ox has a yoke. Jesus had a yoke. He's the chief ox, servant, pioneer. It's a different grace. And we're going to talk about the other ones because we're going to get into the fivefold tonight. There's a different grace on the apostles and you cannot smother them. You cannot suppress them. You cannot coerce them because they are a muscle built beast. They have come through the process of God. They have been uh, tested in every area. They've been tested with Satan himself. They've been tested up against the principalities. They've been, they're not, they're not people focused, they're kingdom focused. You will never understand them. So don't try to, because if God tells them to shift left, they're going to shift left if nobody comes. They're not concerned about the people. That's a different grace. And we're going to talk about that person later. But the apostle, if you don't understand what kind of ox they are, they don't build on somebody else's program and on somebody else's mindset and something. They are very uh, concerned with how things are built. They plow raw field. It, they move rocks out the way they are called to plow and to break new territory open. And there's a certain grace that rests upon that type. So the other type is a son-making apostle. We hit that last week. A son-making apostle is not a hireling. He doesn't go around to big churches, splitting churches and bringing people over into his camp. He don't do that. They come up through the loins and an apostle, a true apostle will never take a person in that is not a, not it, that uh, is a runaway. They know they can't do that. They can't take a runaway. The first question an apostle asks, where, where are you coming from? And how did you leave? Because they know that if they bring them in the mix, they're all about the order of God. So the son-making apostle has the ability to produce sons. Paul didn't have a lot of them. He said, you may have 10,000 instructors, but have you not many fathers? He told Timothy he begot him through the gospel. So the son making, there are apostles that today, 
they truly have sons. They're able to birth them. They're able to groom them. They, they know who they are and they know who their father is. They have the ring and the robe of their son. Nobody else have the ring and the robe. They may have an inheritance, but they're going to come back to the father's house for the ring and the robe, which is the covenant and their mantle. The robe is the mantle that is given successively from generation to generation. So the next one is the government of God. If you ever know an apostle, they don't play gimmicks, gadgets, and all that kind of stuff to do things. They reach in the fish's mouth, take out what they need, and they keep moving. They don't build because of what they have. Every time an apostle builds, he never have enough people, he never have enough money, and he never have enough lifespan because what they're building is generational. So they know that they're not going to finish what they did. Paul, none of the apostles that died a horrendous death knew that they weren't going to finish, but they laid the seeds for us to finish. So if you're trying to build something that only you can capsulize, it's not bigger than you, I would check whether or not the government of God is in that scope. They deal with authorities, principalities, rulers and darkness and wicked spirits. They have a reputation with Jezebel, Kor, Epsilon, Behemoth. All of them know them. Why? Because they're not wimps. They go into, they know when God has given them a land, they take the land, they don't ask permission. They know that the enemy of the seven ites that are in the land, they know they're squatters. They command and heaven and Michael and his army comes, Gabriel announces that he's coming and they have to move. So when you go, they realize that we're not going to build anything till we plow the land, till we bring the government of God in, till we, in this period of time, the sons are made by the demonstration of the apostle. So Jesus, how did Jesus build into the sons? Everywhere he went, they saw him heal the blinded, they saw him cast out devils, and they did the same thing. He did it and they did it. So these are the six types. So now what I did last week, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but I pulled out um, 12, maybe 13 types of prophets. Now, all gifts can prophesy. But a prophet not only deals with the gift, the anointing, but they have the integrity. The difference in a false prophet and a true prophet is the integrity. It's their life. It is not whether the prophecy come to pass. It is not whether they what they said happened. It's their cleanliness. Jezebel was a false prophet because Jezebel seduce the daughters to commit sexual immorality and keep things sacrificed into idols. Amen. So when we talk about prophets, they are intercession. They prophetic. I, I had some more notes. I kind of dropped my notebook. I think I wrote something. But repentance, they're called John the Baptist. Um, and I had all of the different prophets. But when you go and study various prophets, judging the prophets of dreams and visions that, I mean, when I say they, they, they understand the mysteries, they understand the depths of dreams. And it's not because you did this or you did that. So I have these here. Now they exhort the word. Um, and I use the example of Silas was one that then the covenant restore. There are prophets that are called to restore the covenant, healing, extreme power, their seers, their scribes, their prophetic songs. Now, all of this that we do and operate is for one purpose, is to build a people and build a purpose and build an, from the mantle for God's glory. If any of these gifts operate for their own selfishness, they are operating under the flesh. And the works of flesh, according to uh, Galatians 5, are these. So when you see people and you say, listen, they are anointed and they are um, and they're gifted. So how is it that they could do all of this? Well, when we look at Ephraim, and I talked about this Sunday, Ephraim was the one that Jacob had 
placed the blessing on. And the blessing was on him. So he had the gift. He had the anointing. But because he became wicked, and Hosea read all the 10th chapter of the whole book of Hosea, from the first to the, you'll see that Ephraim went into the Assyrian idols. And when he went into the Assyrian idols, God said he took his ability to have seed, to reproduce. The apostolic is about reproducing. So he had the anointing, but he was unclean. He was rebellious. Everything you could think of, he did. But he had influence and he had driven all of the other sons out of the 12. He ended up over northern Israel and Judah was over southern Israel. He influenced Judah. And that's why you see in the 13th verse, it said, Ephraim is a trained heifer. Now, I said, Father God, how in the world is Ephraim a trained heifer? Ephraim is a man. And I looked up and I studied and I found out that a trained heifer is a bull that once could bear, could have calves and they're barren. They lost their ability to produce. And as a result of it, they train him to do nothing but to pull the, 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 uh, pull the, the, um, what's the word I want to say? To pull the yoke. So this is a, this is a prophet or, or leader that had the anointing. I want y'all to hear me. They had the anointing. They had the blessing. But they got into idolatry. He got into immorality. And God flipped, he calls him a trained heifer. Look that up if you want to study it. That means he is of no use for why he was anointed. He is of no use why he was a consecrated call. And so what we're going to do is let him be one that would drag around the... Uh, to plow the field, just a he's just a, a useless ox, not for what God wanted him to do. So I that's why he went from saying that he was a and you all read that it's it's powerful reading. The, the book is not that long. It'll take you about an hour and go back and study that. That's why in that beginning scripture, let me just sidebar on that that God told uh, Hosea to marry a harlot. And I thought the whole, you know, everything was focused around that. But Ephraim had such influence. And this is why we're going to talk about what we're talking about today. Sometimes we think the, 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 the person who has the greatest influence is actually doing the right thing. But he didn't. But God still prophesied that he would preserve Israel. But he judged Ephraim by taking away his ability to have seed. When you have no seed, you have no ministry. So what happens with people who are prophesying and who were, were blessed, had, had hands laid on them, they were consecrated. They're considered a false prophet. All right. So y'all uh, help understand that. Okay. Now, what I put up here last week, I did this week, I, I want to read a scripture, or let me talk about this first a little bit. In one of the dreams, I talk about the eight dreams. One of the dreams that uh, one of the scriptures is about 11 or 12 scriptures that speaks of a plumb line. And what a plumb line is a measuring. And in Amos 7 and 7, it's a way in which God measures if something has been deviated, if it's built according to the way he designed it to build. It was very important that Moses, that trusted with the pattern, that it be built according exactly, no deviation, none whatsoever. And so in Zechariah 1 and 16, it says, therefore, thus says the Lord, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercies and my house shall be built in it, said the Lord of hosts, and the line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Chapter two, verse two. Then 
said I, whether goest thou? And he said unto me to measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth and the length thereof. This was called the plumb line. And the plumb line, and in, in, if you go to Amos 7, 7 let's, let's get that real quick. One of the minor prophets, hallelujah. Why don't I put my glasses on so I can see? Hey, babe. Hi. I'm at, in class. I know. I just wanted to say hello. Yeah. Hello, class. <laughs> they can't, they're not talking. For real? What's the ninja you don't like? Huh? The ninja. Nine, nine, um, 390. Apostle Mel always peep in the class and y'all say hi with the seven and seven. Okay. It says he showed me a 390, uh, 25 and flip it over. He showed me and behold, the Lord stood upon the wall in some translation is a vertical wall. I always talk about these vertical walls and I, and a, a vertical wall upon the wall made a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. Now, here's the thing. My question would be to you all, and we're going to answer this when we start chitting, chatting. Can, do we have the right and authority to alter the pattern? Because God has a plumb line, and you all can holler at me in the chat. I can see you. He has a plumb line to measure. Now, what he is measuring is whether or not we can stand the storm and stand against the enemy that is coming after us. And see, a lot of times we'll stay in something that is built wrong, hoping that the tornado will come through and won't take me out. And nor will we leave and protect ourselves. But what I was saying about Ephraim, Ephraim had vast influence over Israel. Northern Israel, it was only two parts that had once been 12. He's dangerous because it has become the modified. It has become modified. It has become not what God had instructed him to do. Now, if God instructed, which he did, he instructed Moses to build it four times. He told him, don't change this. Is, I wanted so many cubic feet. I want this. I want that. I want one door. He says, I want the holies of holies. I want the, the mercy seat. I want the presence of the showbread. I want all of that. So if he decided to deviate, what would happen? Bezalel would be confused as to what to build. And the 40th chapter of Exodus, God would not habitate it. The Bible says in the 40th chapter of Exodus, when the house was finished, the way God had instructed, there was no deviation. They did not come in and say, we don't want apostles and prophets. I mean, you know where I'm going with this, right? You would be surprised how many works of ministry that they are around the world that have no foundation. Well, the foundation is Jesus Christ. The Bible said he gave some to be apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Well, we don't have a problem with the pastors, the teachers and evangelists, but we're not we're not qualified to be an apostle or we built the church without that. Can we deviate and be okay? Is this why we're so carnal? Is this why we're so weak? Is this why we have more enemies inside the house than we do outside? Is there a possibility that we have deviated from the plumb line, have deviated from the pattern? And this pattern that you're looking at right now is the typical pattern. It's the pattern that we started our ministry with. You know, you get the pattern number one. I want y'all to call it pattern number one. We get a few deacons. We get a praise team. We hire a musician. We get a secretary, pastor's wife, and we start a Bible study. 
We don't even consider even an apostle. But if God's pattern is the second one. Now, this is the this is what this is what most of the ministries that I know of. There are so many of them until most people think it's right. And it goes from generation to generation to generation building out of this pattern. But we're having the same problems, generation to generation, church splits, generation to generation fighting, deacons fighting, deacons controlling, generation, generation. And the spiritual authority was given to the apostolic. The authority in the spirit, not the, not maybe not the administrative authority, but the spiritual authority was handed to the foundation, the apostles. They were the ones that set elders in the church. Why? Because they wanted to make sure they brought the elders around them so that they could catch the apostolic. The apostolic is about conquering. It's about the army of the Lord that is going to advance the kingdom all over the world. And certain ministry gifts, certain offices only contain people. And I'll tell you why, because they're, they're just to guard them against the wolves. But then they're, they're, there's the ministry grace, the apostle and power prophet that have the ability to take the wolves down. And so if you, and this was a strategy in religiosity to destroy their prophets. That's why Jesus said in the 11th chapter of St. Luke, you killed the apostles and prophets that I sent. And the ones you didn't kill, you persecuted and your children was involved. They built the burial grounds, the sepulchers to bury them. It was a, it was an ongoing business to kill apostles. It was an ongoing business to kill apostles in the time of the apostles. The Bible said that they killed James to appease the people, knew it would vex them. But because the people were apostolic, they didn't run like most people do that don't have an apostle. They went into prayer and they prayed until God loosed Peter out of jail. Peter was on death row. So there's a different kind of people that apostles produce. So why would the devil not want them in this pattern? I don't see nowhere in here. Well, we have an apostle. He's 50 million miles away and we see him every 10 years and he sent us here to do the work. I asked the question, where is the apostolic anointing? When we talk about apostles, where is the one that have the government of God? Where's the one that's making the sons? Because if you can't make sons, you're going to steal sons. Where are the ones that are called to break open the city, to plow the field? Where is the pattern? And so if you don't have a pattern, if you don't know there is a pattern, you're going to create your own pattern. But the plumb line that God was talking about was to make sure we didn't deviate, that this house was built the way he wanted to. And the tabernacle of Moses was one example. The tabernacle of Solomon was an example. There was always a tabernacle until David, who did not build a natural tabernacle. The Bible said Jesus sat on the throne of David. It was David and the presence of the Lord, which was the house in which we are today. It was prophesying the coming of a tabernacle that was not brick and mortar, but God used it as a prototype to show us the pattern, everything God does. Even Noah, the apostle Noah had a pattern to build the ark. So these are not, these are apostles and you've got to see those of you that are teaching, you got to see the word of God through the eyes of the apostolic builder. You got to shift your mind because this right here that I'm showing you pattern number one is a catastrophe. It is a, it is, if they don't infiltrate it, you can keep it. You can keep meeting. They were meeting in the 19th chapter of Acts in the synagogue. They were meeting. They've always been meeting. They were meeting before Jesus came. But when the kingdom of God message came, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace and joy. When they started preaching the kingdom of God, they maligned against Paul. He got the folk filled. He brought them into the church and they drove them out the church. Paul took them 12 people out that they got filled with the Holy Spirit and it was prophesied and went into the school of Tyrannus. This is in the 19th chapter of your Bible and stayed there two years and taught the people in the Bible said they turned the world upside down. The devil do not want the world turned outside. He just want a nice little bless you club. 
He wants us, a, you know, three songs and a, a, don't get mad and don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You know, I'm telling you the truth. And so we're where we are right now. We saying Jesus is coming back. He is not coming back until all things are restored. He is not coming back to a, a bride that has altered, that has garments. The garments are altered. So here's the thing. So we've got this pattern. This is pattern number one. Pattern number two. Here's the pattern. Okay. He gave some to be apostles, prophets, pastors. Now, this part of the pattern, I'm only dealing with the foundation. Ephesians 2 and 20 said, therefore, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. The 22nd verse says, to become a habitation of the presence of the Lord. So you see Jesus, you see the apostles, you see the Holy Spirit overseeing the work, becoming a habitation, something that God wants to live in. And you know, you all are where many of people are praying. They got this old pattern number one. And they saying, we're praying for revival. We're praying for revival. Oh, God, send revival. We're going to fast the first 21 days that God will revival come. The ones that keep the fire lit in the New Testament was the apostle. It, they said they didn't know what that was that hit the people on Pentecost. And the apostle Peter stood up and said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, God would pour out of his spirit. He, not only that, when Cornelius had gathered the people, why didn't he get the folk filled with the Holy Spirit? He went for the apostle. And the apostle came, got the folk filled and sat down and taught them the kingdom of God. So if you kill the apostles, you have pattern one. But pattern two, what I did is I took and I merged together that some of those that I pulled out as the prophets and look at what kind of church you would have. Look what kind of building, what kind of pattern God gave us. This pattern that you're looking at, pattern two, would deal with Jezebel. It would deal with uh, Korah. It would deal with Epsilon. It would deal with Behemoth. It would deal with Diablo. It would deal with Baal. Why? People don't want to allow because they don't understand and they've been destroyed and displaced and Satan has come in and run folk raggedy. So here at the bottom, Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, holding everything together. But we got the apostle with the pattern. Everybody know, everybody should know in any type of ministry, who has the pattern? Who got the pattern? It's not, you don't, you go out there, my son, I always use Marcus. I said, Marcus, we go out there and we visit him because my husband's like three minutes away from Marcus. And Marcus got the pattern, the master pattern. And that's what they're going to judge whether or not to pay these folks by the pattern. He's not going up there talking to the electrician and the, and the HVC. They, they want the person with the pattern. And that's who the county downtown have signed off. And when they come back and do the final inspection, they're not going to, they're going to have to have the blueprint. They can't take the blueprint and throw it away. So every work needs to have a blueprint. And it needs to be clear who has the blueprint. It's not based on gender. It's not based on color. It's not based. God will allow that anointing to emerge when he's called to work. He went and called Moses. He called Moses to be a builder. Now, you know, Ur was a builder and Aaron was a builder because they built the calf. It was the wrong thing. But do you know, Ur was the grandfather of Bezalel. So you had Bezalel, but the difference with Ur and Bezalel is that God said, this time I'm going to fill him with the spirit. So when he builds something, he'll build according to the spirit because the spirit is going to connect him with Moses and he's going to understand what to build. I hope y'all got that. So the pattern apostle, this is, you know, when my husband and I finally realized, okay, I'm the, I'm, you know, I'm not a first lady and y'all need to kill that devil. I tell you that thing is one of the worst weapons for deception is there is no such thing in the kingdom of God of a first lady. Okay, crickets. All right, there is not. So, you know, you know, I remember when we started the work, I didn't even put my name on nothing. It was my husband's name because I'm coming out of this pattern one. Y'all remember pattern one. But God began to download the pattern. But it's been, it's, it's, it's been all my life. And so until my husband and I realized where the God can switch and give him the pattern, he can give you the pattern. But listen, 
He's not looking for gender. He's not looking for this. And, you know, we try to we try to create something that's not there. But the grace, if the grace is there, then the assignment is there. If the grace is not there, you're wearing Saul's helmet and it's going it, to it's not going to flourish. It's not going to grow. It's not going to have life because you're trying to make it out of a mindset that if, you know, if he's the man, then he's the apostle and then she's the prophetess, you know. You know, every gift, every anointing is equal in value. Hear me. They're all valuable. My my son is valuable as the superintendent, but also is the electrician valuable because if he's building something, he have no builders. It, it's, it's not going to come. The blueprint is just going to be a blueprint. But the ox, uh, here we have the pattern apostle. So the pattern apostle is going to work with these others, but because the pattern apostle know who he is or she is, she's going to make it known. It ain't no secret. You know, I'm the, I'm the, this, I'm the, that. that's fine. People don't know how to work with you because they don't know what you are. You say you this, but you got 15 churches and you're flying it every two hours at them. Like nobody can do nothing, but you, that's, that's my people are destroyed. And people are sitting there saying, we don't know when she's the first lady. What is a first lady? What is that? That's a non-functioning individual that's sitting there for what? Until the next second lady come, the third lady, all of that stuff. We don't know where God, when you when you begin a work, God will, when you say we're going to build something, builders are going to show up. I'm telling you right now. It may be four, it may be three, it may be two, but people that are not called to build are not going to show up. They're not going to pray through. They're not going to plow nothing. They're not going to break nothing. And so don't get mad at them because the grace of an apostle is that they have to lest they die. They cannot just sit around and watch things fall apart. They have inside of them, which God called them. Paul said from birth, he was called. Now, wait a minute. Wasn't Paul a renegade? That's why he went into Arabia to be recalibrated because he was fighting the wrong team. He was a builder then when he was, he was, as he said, least among to be called an apostle. But he said, you're the proof of my apostleship because I got fell on the beast, fell off the beast, went down to Ananias and got things straight. Okay. So the ox is the pioneer. So look at this pattern. Just think about it. We could shift these ministries. Can you imagine when the devil tries to tear up the marriages when the devil tries to put our kids on drugs and you got this kind of building, this is just the foundation. You got a, an ox that literally is not building the ground, laying the footings. I mean, just pioneering the work, not trying to get somebody else's cookie made pattern. Then you have the government of God, that authority that God delegated to take the city because you got, God has to take a city. He has to give you a city so you can come in. When you come into the city, he says, listen, if they receive you, bless the house. If they don't shake the dust, it will be a testimony. But when you walk in the government of God, you know where you have landed. The prophet gift, the extreme power and authority to open heaven, to shut up heaven. The seer, you know, um, I always use the example of Moses' father-in-law, Jeth Jethro. Uh, Hobab was the name that in the King James, he told him, he says, if, if I'm going to go, I need you to go because you have the eyes of the terrain. You, you need that seer to know when to open the gate and when to close the gate. We are a many member body. Then you need the master builder, the one who actually know how to pull the sons and pull all of the trades together. And then you need an apostle or prophet that can exhort the word by revelation. Paul said in Ephesians 2 and 3, he said, revelation is given unto me for you. Why did he just say revelation was given unto you? He said he gives it to me. So when I speak it out, I'm speaking it under the anointing of the apostle. So you'll receive the apostle grace over you. 
That's how you deal. The, the foundation has to be connected to the house. It has to be connected to the wall. It has to be connected to the window. So first, um, first Corinthians 12 and 28 says, first apostles, proton, first to build, first to lay the foundation, secondarily prophet. It doesn't mean one is greater than the other. It's just the order in which God has designed it to build. He gave Moses the pattern first. Then he told Moses, I have anointed, I have, I have sent, I have set, I have said Bezalel. So it's God's church, is God's habitation. Now, as I quoted the scripture now, if you can see that, that's great. He gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. I'm gonna break all this down in just a few minutes. That we should no more be tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in cunning craftiness of deceit plotting, but speak the truth in love that we may grow up in all things unto him, join and knit it together in what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which we, every part does its share. Every part does its share. Cause growth, okay, growth, cause growth in the body of the edifying in love. So you say, You've been in ministry 30 years and don't know what you are. Don't know what gift. Well, I was ordained minister. What is, what kind of minister? You know, I'm a doctor. What kind of doctor? Are you a general internal medicine? Are you a specialist? What kind of doctor? We're the only place where it's incognito. And I believe it's because we don't know what we're doing we and, and and let me say this i'm not i'm just sharing out of my heart but it's sad when people have gone through bible college and got a doctorate and don't know what i'm teaching tonight because it has taught you out of the apostolic and when when people teach you that apostles died we know they die they all die so did the prophets die but did the apostolic mantle die and who buried it and when did it die and who told you that it died when did it die when did the so everything died but the pastor teaching the evangelist okay everything died that has the government of god everything died that pioneers everything died that's a master builder everything died so that leaves you with a religious circle of pastor, prophet, teacher. I believe every pastor, every prophet, every teacher, every evangelist should be apostolic prophetic. I'm not saying the office, but they, you, apostles build apostolic prophetic people. Prophets build prophetic people. So prophetic people are not coddled. They're not horizontal thinking. They're not, you know, you can tell who has been to, to, uh, tutoring you is by what comes out. Well, I don't know what I'm going to, I'm not sure. You know, I'm kind of, I, I kind of, we did do a Bible study one time on uh, the gifts of the spirit. We do one every year. You cannot do a teaching once a year on the apostolic and you become an apostolic people. There's no way because the enemy comes in right away to take that out and confuse it. And if you don't know something and you're teaching on this because you haven't been taught. Or you haven't come under it. Now, these are the gifts of the kingdom. You notice I always put the apostles on the bottom. And I don't know how in the world we got to where apostles are up in the in, in the rafters with these big old cones on their head and, and all of this. I, I just don't understand it. It's confusing the people when it's in the foundation. The foundation is on the bottom. It's not on the top. It is a broken. It is a humility. It is. Listen, he said. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. He asked Peter, who, whom do men say that I am? 
when Peter had the revelation that he was the Christ, the son of the living God, he said, because of that revelation, I can build on you. And see, people won't say, nah, he didn't build on Peter. Yes, he did. He built on the revelation that he was the Christ, the son of the living. So we have apostles, we have pastors, we have teachers. So these are gifts of the kingdom, okay? Anybody to try to build anything else is not kingdom. Now, let me tell you how we break this down. In here, this is, we're now in class two. We're fully in class two. A lot of it was lingering over from class one. The apostle, prophet, pastor, teachers, the work of building, I put it in four categories. All of this that I've read in Ephesians 11, uh, Ephesians 4 and 11 through 16, I think. The work of ministry. What we're building is the work of ministry. We're to build the body of Christ. To build the body, edifying itself in love, we fitly join together. So it's not a hierarchy. It's not, I'm up here and you down here and you do what I say when I say it and how I say it. God gave us authority and dominion over the fishes of the sea, the birds of the air, and every creeping thing. He did not give us dominion over people. Amen. I submit to my husband because I want to. <laughs> Some of y'all may not like that. Submission is something you give and you submit to love. You don't submit to being slapped around and beat and abused and raped. You don't submit to that. That is not what the word of God means. Okay, so it is the work of building the body together in love, number one. Number two is to grow and mature. This is very, very important. You can tell when a church has not touched the apostolic because it's immature. Let a pastor go overseas for two weeks and Nate and tore the church up. The deacons then beat up the folk and put out the choir and set down the usher board, all of that, because they were groomed to depend on one person. The difference in the apostolic is that the apostolic produces an army. This is why Jesus, the, the scripture I gave on in Zechariah, he comes back with a plumb line and makes sure you haven't deviated. The purpose of if, you, if the enemy gets you to deviate, when you come back, when the enemy, when the ites and the Moabites, the Hittites and the Jebusites and, and the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Baal come, they don't know how to fight because you kept them on milk and they need to be drinking, eat, eating meat. So maturity is a sign of an apostolic work in the fullness of Christ into a perfect man. Mature. The mature of house of God, the mature of the saints, no more immature children. The, the kingdom of God message was to bring the children of God into maturity. Perfect. We raise all five of our children to leave home. We raise all. And when you come into a ministry, there will always be those that are teaching within the house. But if you narrow ministry, the work of ministry to your, your four walls and you control everything in there, you are outside of the pattern that God has given. No more. Listen, it, I'm telling you, it will work. Don't be afraid to release people. Don't be afraid to identify what you see in them. You have no right to hide. They're, if they're a prophet, don't be calling them a Sunday school teacher. If they're not, I'm just saying. And then groom them and help them through the process of becoming what God wants, because they're going to be a blessing to you. If you deform them, if you, if you try to suppress them, it's going to come back at you. My, I can't even get my children to come some holidays. Mom, me and my family, we're going such and such and such and such. And that's what my husband and I groomed. There was an exit sign on our door. It was not until they died and we put their name in a resolution. But uh, many times, okay, so I'm, I'm going to get off that horse. Grow up in the things of Christ, okay? The head, who is the head of the church to the measure of the full stature of Christ. The purpose of the five-fold ministry is to prepare a people for whatever comes. People are coming on the altar for the same thing they did last year. 
you ask a person, you know, uh, I ask, uh, what, what, what's your, what's your mantle? What mantle rests on you? Mantle? What do you mean mantle rests on me? I don't know. I, uh, you, back during the pandemic, I said, sent a message out for people to uh, minister on Facebook. And somebody hit me back and said, I don't, I don't minister. I, 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 I go to my apostles and they minister to me. And I'm thinking, whatever's happened in 30 years, you mean to tell me you can't minister on Facebook? You can't do nothing? You what what has happened to us? We have put people to sleep, and we're the only ones got the anointing to preach, cast out devils. And when they get sick and they can't get to you, they don't have the authority. You haven't taught them how to move in the realms, to understand the types of God's presence and how to hear God's voice, how to know the difference in God's voice and the enemy's voice and the voice, your voice. Number three, speak all speak know that the unity of the faith of the son of god first of all you got to know how to speak the truth you can't speak the truth unless you know that you can't know the truth until you experience something the knowledge of the son of god until we all come into the unity of faith okay here's the thing this is really key to avoid men who are subtly deceiving the same ones that jesus said from Abel to Zechariah did not go on a vacation. They are crouching at the door. And it ain't the devil. It's men that want to not shift. Toss to and fro. So people say, I'm confused about the apostolic. Right, because you haven't been taught enough. When I say it, when I talk to people that have been in Bible college and got a doctorate degree, and don't understand their apostle gift and will fight you to tell you the apostles are dead. That's why the Bible said the children build sepulchers. They build them probably before they even announce them because we're going to kill them. How do you kill apostles? You act like they're not important. How do you kill apostles? You say, well, I'm not one. And you know you want. I talk to people all the time and I know I've, I've been up ministering and I, I look at it and said, apostle. And you just listen to what they're doing. Well, I'm, I don't I don't want to disturb my people that's above me, my, my overseer. He's the apostle and you're not. And you're building the work. He's not, you know. And so why is this a problem? Because God said, Build it according to the way I told you. And if somebody's insecure, if somebody's threatened, that's their issue. That's not yours. And you say, well, I'm not going to. Listen, your loyalty is where? You know, if God has graced you, then in your loin are those sons that will never be known. They will never come. Let me tell you this. I shared this when I was in the Netherlands. We have a responsibility to carry the bones of Joseph out of Egypt. And I apologize to a group of young people who been looking for the fire of God, but they didn't have it because I don't believe it's coming out the sky. I believe my generation, I received the bones of revival fire from my grandmother. And there's two things I could have done. I could have stayed in pattern number one, or I could have embraced the apostolic. And I, I made a great sacrifice and lost a lot of friends and a lot of relationships that disregard what I'm doing now because I left an organization that if anybody leaves here, they're going to fall in a hole and they're going to die. You'll, you'll never leave the church. We'll, they'll always hang that over you. But because God, I was looking for an authentic fire. What we see in America as fire jumping around, swinging from the rafters, and, and, and we've learned how to dance and all that, that is not the fire of the Holy Spirit that is happening in the earth. Because what happens to you when you come together should not end when you walk out the door. 
These are men of God. And the woman was right in what she said, but it was the wrong spirit that have come to turn the world upside down. Because when the fire of God hits your life, God is going to reveal your mantle. He's going to reveal your assignment because you cannot have an assignment without a mantle. There's so much confusion. I hear people, they, they, they got all these prayer groups. They've got all these meetings and conferences. And I'm thinking, but they're not even in the right tribe. <clears throat> Why did I say that? Because they're getting this backlash because they just want to do something. And they figure they can do it under a different type of mantle. And they don't know what the mantle is because all of that responsibility should be to the one that carries the pattern and the one that God called to be the overseer of that particular work is they have a responsibility to instruct you and to tell you what you are, not to keep it secret because I need choir members. I'm gonna take you off the prophetic training and I'm gonna stick you in the choir because you got a voice. You know, and this is what's happened to us. We are now, now here's the deal. And I'm about, I think I'm at the last, uh, I want to go back to, here's the deal. This is the, this is the, this is the, the big one. This is the big one. Because there's so many like pattern one. I mean, it's just swept over while we were asleep. From generations to generations, even I got brothers and sisters that will fight you for pattern one. They don't understand the apostolic. They don't understand, you know, and we grew up in the same house. But when I looked at what my grandmother did in the revival, you know, we talk about out in A.A. A. Allen, that was a real revival. My grandmother was a part of that, even though she was she was connected to pattern one, but she reached outside and grabbed pattern two and and built churches that today, from what I understand, and she died when I was 14, that still have apostles there, women that she raised up. And here's what she would do when we were potty trained at the age, once we were four years old and potty trained. We could travel with her. We thought we were going on vacation, but she was taking us under the revival fire. And in that revival fire, I would see people raised up out of wheelchairs. I'd see eyes open, ears unstopped. She would go in and pray in a home that was tore up, about to divorce. And she'd say, baby, just leave the basement open. She'd go in there three days and fast. You wouldn't know when she came and you wouldn't know when she left, but God put that marriage together. And everywhere I, she would take us, there was always miracles, signs, and wonders. Now, here's the thing. Not only did she do that, but after we got back, she had a movie projector that she filmed everything. And so she was really imparting that grace on us. Okay? So it was second nature for me to pray for somebody and God raise them up. It, it's just, you know, I see somebody, you know, God raise you up. So I grew up around that, but and I got in a pattern where the it was pattern one. And 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 so in that pattern one, I didn't see those. You know, these shout. They say we having a revival and folk running around shouting, and you know, you shouting two by two, shouting by one because something it, but there was no revival fire, not the fire that I saw. So when I was looking at this fire. It was always in my spirit. And this is why I moved away from pattern one and the people. I had to find my tribe. Because if you think it's going to happen in pattern one, if you think revival fire is going to hit, I can take you to Exodus 40. God, he, he inhabited that that he designed and that that he designed, they built. And the Bible said the glory of God fell where nobody could stand because it was his building. So we can holler, sweat, foam at the mouth, all we want, trying to ask God to take something he never initiated to build. 
And that's the frustration. That's why people don't want to come to church. That's why there's no power with thoughts and prayers. And our kids are being shot down like bowling pins. There's no, there's, we, we, because some of us did not carry the bones of Joseph into the next generation. They haven't seen a miracle. They haven't heard you pray a miracle. They haven't heard you ask God. They've heard everything else. Just go to church. Just be faithful. Be good. God, I'm blessed and highly favored. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. They're going to sin. They're going to do this. They're going to do it. And just have just messed up the pattern. But here's the thing. The problem with it, like I'm saying, is that it's so many of them that most people think it's right. That was the plan and strategy. They went into the dark period after all of the apostles physically were dead. You study that. It was, it was a terrible time. They, the apostles, the 12 apostles, died horrendous deaths, but it did not stop the apostolic work. It did not stop the pattern. And so God today is, those of you that are on here, if it's out of curiosity, or some of you may have come on here to, to debate or whatever you came on here, I really don't have to know, <laughs> except the fact that you're here. And my prayer, my son said this, mom, you've been teaching this for years and, and, and it may be 10 years before people catch it because you're going to shake some things, you all. If you start even ministering this, if you start teaching this, you're going to shake. When they went in and Paul tried to teach in that synagogue, the Bible said they maligned against them for arguing with them for three months. They, you figured you'd have got these people saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. They prophesied and you're going to bring them into the house that they know the tabernacle. And they're not going to be happy about it. Why? Because that means they're going to have to, and it's, it's, it's pride. They're going to have to admit we were wrong. I went to a ministry and I thank God for this apostle. I went three times. And when I first walked in there, nice size church, state of the art state-of-the-art sound and i was there to work with another group that had been there 20 something years and they branched off to start a work so at the same token i'm asked to minister on sunday and i everywhere i'm going i'm ministering apostolic so they've known me for years and they trusted me so i'm in between two groups i said god you got to help me i got to help them understand and i said to him Standing up in his pulpit, I honor you, apostle, because he is an apostle. I honor you as pastor uh, who is a prophet. And I looked out in the congregation and I said, how many apostles are here today? And it got quiet. I honored him. I looked out in the audience. I said, where are the other apostles? And they didn't raise a hand. I said, okay. That's for now, where are the builders? And so many people raised their hand. And I said, apostle, it's impossible for you to be an apostle and you don't draw apostles. And I began to, for three times, I went each time I was invited. And I remember the humility. He says, I did not know. He said, I got apostles all over the world. Because every time they left, because they didn't understand, they called them rebels. So because of this, it united the group that was leaving back with the apostle. And he realized, I just didn't know. And that is, that is commendable. Because you didn't know. That's why we've had such a shipwreck. That's why the church is in such a disarray. The church is immature. If Jezebel walked in there today dressed like a priest, you wouldn't know the difference. And most of them come in wolves closing. 
You wouldn't know the difference. Why? Because they're the ones that pay the most. They're the ones that want to be in the leadership. But they're not clean. And I've heard somebody say to me, they knew the young man was living a filthy life. And this is what they said, but he can raise an offering. And because of that, we're going to invite him in. I said, I promise you, your church will be desolate in a few months. Your church will rot and empty out because they're going to leave spirits. And so when the apostles are speaking, you want to shut them down because they're not in your authoritative position. So that is the last of this particular class. Apostle Don, Pastor Don, you want to, what I want to do is I'm going to bring up, if you want to come up, I'm going to bring you up. Do, are you okay with that? How are you? Turn your mute off. Let me see. D do I have Can to Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. How are you tonight? I'm wonderful. Bless you. First time I met you, we've been corresponding in the class. I am honored, honored, honored to have you. Thank you. I'm How honored to be a part of this. I'm doing good. This is this is some heavy teaching. I um I'm speechless. I just don't I, I it's 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 stuff I knew but wasn't taught. And um, I think you're laying it out easy so I can understand and I'm trying to grasp it. Um, I know I walk in the apostolic realm, but I, I'm not called an apostle. I'm not looking to be called that. I'm not thirsty for the title, but I thank God for this teaching and it's uh, bringing things in order. So what, tell me about your ministry. Uh, do you have a church or what? Do you, what? Yes, we have a church. We started in July of 2005, the Eagles Nest Worship Center. I come from a large apostolic denomination. I was on staff there. Uh, my bishop, who's passed on, he didn't believe in the apostle or the prophet. He just believed in the threefold. And I did not uh, push the fivefold while I was there on staff, but I, I believed it in my heart. So uh, we left a, a, a group of us and started the church in 2005. We're going strong now. And uh, I'm going to prepare the leaders to get ready for this teaching. Amen. You know, first the blade. And here's the thing. it's it. There's an anointing that's going to come over just hearing the word. I am. Um, I shared this this morning because this is all I've been teaching. And like I said, somebody says anything else she can teach, apostle, apostle, but I'm the break some ground. And the apostle that's going to be on tomorrow, Apostle Rayo, he's I spoke with him this morning. I think it was this morning. And he had he's been coming to the international apostles for 15 years. But I had done a live just through, somebody heard the teaching and said, we got to have her. So I went on, and this is no glory to me. I just want y'all to understand how God is doing this. But he said, we got to have her. So he introduced me to the apostle that's over 250 churches right now. They're pushing for a thousand churches. They're under great persecution right now. As a matter of fact, it's going before the Supreme Court to shut down Christian churches. And when they are mm. attacked by fires and uh, vandalism and all that, the police don't get involved because they kind of like you on your own. So we've been praying and they keep moving the date of the Supreme Court back. But when he came here, um, you know, I had just done a live on his, on it, on the live. So when he came here to Dallas, he was gonna be here three weeks and he says, I wanna see you. I wanna meet you and your husband. So they paid for him a ticket to come to Atlanta. And I spent, we spent two days 
put them up in a hotel. And he just carried this, this, this uh, recorder around. Every time I opened my mouth, he was recording. He just asked me questions. And I was just she, uh, sharing and sharing and sharing. And then he said something to me as we were sitting. My husband and I were sitting. He looked at me. He says, and I'm like, I'm a black woman. I mean, I'm just the voice. And he says, I need somebody. I don't have anybody. You know, I have sons and so forth, but I don't have anybody that can just really help me and walk with me. And I just kind of bowed and I said, well, I'll do whatever I can do. So he calls me like every two weeks. He's a little bit older than my oldest child and his wife. I've met them. I've talked to them online and God connected. So this morning he calls me because when you're on here teaching, just like you, you can be taught so much until it becomes a part and you don't even know it. And you're struggling. Your, your ministry is weak. You can see the weakness. You can see the lack of clarity. And he says, apostle, you got to hear me. He sound, he was so excited. He says, the, the Zoom tape that I did of you has gone to hundreds of thousands of Indi in India. Hundreds of thousands. Wow. And it has brought together the Baptists, the Methodists, the, the Pentecostal, the all of the denominations, and they're sitting and hearing. And he said, he said, Apostle, you got to understand. He said, you got to understand. I'm on platforms now in meetings that I never were. They're listening. They're wanting. He says, you got to keep. He says, and I want you to pray. And those of you that will, that are listening, I want you to be a blessing and so unto him. He says, I'm now looking at five acres, apostle, in India. And I can't pronounce the name of the country or the city or whatever state. And I'm going to build an apostolic training center. Hmm. He says, and I want you to be involved. And I want you, he says this, this is a thing that, the teaching is clear. It's simple, it, you know, it's simple and it's clear. You know what I'm saying? Because I think God has released an understanding. I think some of it didn't make sense because I was exposed to the apostolic uh, in 40 years ago through Brian Jones out of the Welch revival. But we were not allowed because we were women to be in the meetings. We could only on Friday be in the fellowship. But I bought a book on apostles today. And, and one of my daughters is on here now, Sidonia. And I said, well, since I can, I'm a woman, you know, I kind of went along with the game. I'd sold it into Willie Coates. And those, some of you on here know Willie Coates. And Willie Coates think my husband sold it, but it was me. And so Sedona got pictures that copies of this book because there was not a lot, but yet and still, they were still holding on to some of the old pattern number one, as I say, and some of the believings that come out of Catholicism about whether women can be apostles. You know, and even when people say the apostles are dead, they don't believe in them. That don't mean that they don't exist because you don't believe in them. But that's that's a message that's been carried for generations because there's one organization that only have one apostle and he's dead and they don't, you know, then then. Uh, many of them are apostles, but they decided to be bishops, which we know a bishop is an elder. It's a desire work. An apostle is called from birth. And so what happens? That's how you kill it. It's not a title. It's a function. Right. And if you don't have apostles, you're missing the first layer of the foundation. So look at it like this. We got to jack this house up <laughs> and lay that foundation and whatever I can do to help, because that's what I'm doing in the Netherlands. Apostle Paulette Bushman got it. She got it. And since I've known her in two years, she's planted maybe four or five churches because she had multiple apostles. She had multiple apostles. She knew that. But knowing the types of apostles and for the apostles to recognize who got the blueprint. Mm -hmm. So she's Moses going up in the mountain. She's up in the 40 day fast. She comes down with the with the pattern. And so when she raises up a church, 
So when I go into the Netherlands, the 10 churches are there. I go in there and just begin to minister on the apostolic. So not only the, the she sends a prophet and a pastor in there. Okay. And, and some of the churches she haven't been to in two years. So like when I go to a church and they said, oh, we're so glad to have apostle here. We hadn't had her in two years. Why? Because what she trains and sends out is apostolic. I mean, there's so many sons. I asked her one time how many sons. So, so when I saw that pattern and when I see the work that's happening in Europe and I come to America, my heart is grieved because first of all, we're so intimidated and so afraid to release people and we're so solo conscious. I mean, I, I watch her and I can see people being elevated. They had an ordination a couple of Sundays ago, and I was on the on the live screen. They shot me in on the ordination. And I'm just honored. You know, I'm just honored. But all of these years, I've been in ministry 50-something years solid. You know, you finally find where God has called you, and that is to walk alongside people like you and to make sure that this anointing and that because your house in this time, back in the day, you didn't see apostles really uh, apostolic churches growing, right? Mm -hmm. Because they, they didn't know how to release the sons. I believe that stagnated it because they you, you know the apostles, I'm an apostle, I got five works and you're the only one in the pulpit. But right now apostles in, in, in Jamaica when she go from there, they're raising a church in South America. And then there's another church in Europe that's coming up that, that just birthing. And so this is the pattern. And when I saw it, I came back and I said, God, if we could pick this up and bring it to America, you know, it. And so what Apostle Rayo said to me, really encouraged me because I wish I could do something else. It's not the most popular thing. And the apostle that ordained my husband and I in 2006 said this. He says, I know you're going to Europe, but it, within our circles, it's accepted. But outside, but I'm seeing more people accept it. The thing of it is, is it's going to take more than one time to shift. A church had me come up and do two days. And I, you know, I acknowledge and I begin to set some things. Oh, we got it. Okay, we got it now. We got this thing. And I'm thinking, not only do you have to get it, the people have to get it. And it takes more than one time to just, you know, and so we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to teach on it for 10 years. I mean, for 10 weeks. And I'm thinking that it doesn't work like that. This, this enemy is trying to kill us. He's trying to, here's the thing that's so bad. I call it the other day, the Lord had me to call it, uh, is uh, GMO, g g genetically modified. Okay. It looks like a grape, but it comes from an organism and it don't have a seed. Yeah. Where did Shirley and did she leave? Shirley was on here and she shared something about a dream I had. But the thing that blessed me was the fact that I had, um, I wish she was on here because she shared that. When I say genetically, I've eaten seedless grapes for a long time. Didn't know that they were from an organ. They're not, they don't have seeds. So if the enemy can make us think that this is okay because we feel God's presence or a song touches us emotionally, that we're doing kingdom building. It's not. It's what happens when you're by yourself. You know, after five years in ministry, you should know what you are. And we have to tell them. And that's where the prophets, you know, you bring a prophet in, they can tell you everybody in the room what their call is. So the pastoral gift needs to be connected. So as you walk in the apostolic and the fullness of the apostolic, 
then all of the people are going to be apostolic because you're going to be preaching out of that vein. You're going to be preaching out of that anointing. And the, the what happened with the people with us is they saw the miracles. When we got ready to get a building, we walk over to a place and said, God have need of the end. In 45 days, we had the building. You know what I'm saying? So the people there that saw it, saw the miracles. When they saw people raised up, when they saw people healed, Paul said, I don't preach with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration. So when you step into that place of allowing the Holy Spirit to demonstrate through you, you're literally teaching the people. So what are they going to do? They're going to operate under the same thing. Hey, y'all, I'm going to the hospital, to raise somebody that's dying. Okay, we'll see you when you get back. Did they get up? Yeah, they'll be at church next week. We're demonstration. So we've got to go back. And so when I was in Amsterdam, Rotterdam, which is a city, I saw these young people. And that night before I got on the plane, I said, God, they were all kinds. And to be honest with you, these churches that are raising up these young fire revival, they don't want our 70 year olds in there because we coming with this condemnation and trying to make people change. But if you don't come with the demonstration and the love, they know when you love them. And I'm telling you, just through the word of God, it looked like a bomb dropped in that place. Bodies was everywhere. It was, I mean, the type of people, because in that area, you know, prostitution is legal. But those people were crying out for God. And that's the revival fire that's hitting there. And the thing of it is, is that when you come out of that, you come back to America, you can't tell people that's not the fire. That's not what y'all doing. You're talking, we had a good time because you ran around the church. No, it's what happens the, when you leave there. You go into all the world. The kingdom of God is not in the four walls. You got to hit them streets. You got to go in them bars. You got to walk into the glory till people are healed from your shadow. You know, we become a demonstration. And so we, we, the fire is in us. We just didn't, we just got in the money and we got in the position. So I got brothers and sisters. They was in the same revival fire I was in. But they'll fight you for pattern one. Because mm -hmm. it become an idol. Fight you so bad till <laughs> they have to bury people certain ways. Because they, they don't feel like they, if they don't have the last word over their body under their denomination, then they ain't going to make it into heaven. So I want, uh, I don't know how to say hi to people down below. Uh, apostle, I can stay there. I'm going to bring up if they don't want to say nothing. Hey, Bernice. Hi, Apostle. How are you, Apostle of the Lord? I'm doing well. I'm working, <laughs> but I'm listening to you. Okay. I thank God. Who is this other person? I can't see that. If you could type in the thing, tell me you're in the box. But tell me what you hear. Did you have any questions or anything? No, just a comment. Uh, it's It was a great teaching. I've been in here ever since. And um, I've had some private chats here and public chats in, in, uh, on your Facebook page. And I was just sharing that it's a good teaching. You know, you were the very first person that I heard um, that spoke to me about apostolic ship when it came to me. I think it was the first time when I, well, I, when I saw you at my, at my office in Atlanta and you were like, oh, hey, apostle, you're doing apostle work. And I'm like, I had never heard that from a business standpoint because there are so many um I've heard the teachings of apostles, but more so in in ministry 
uh, in the four walls, let me say that, more so in the four walls than just the marketplace. So uh, you actually were the first person that that I've heard um, speak about that from a building standpoint from the marketplace. So good teaching. But your, see, your the vision that God gave you, and this is one of the signs of an apostle, is too big to put behind four walls. Yes. Okay. And so when I saw that the global work and the national work, first, that's number one. You can you can take that to the bank. That's apostolic. Paul talks about the regions and the sphere of authority, which includes you. So the thing of it is, and when you see that, what and also the sons, you reproducing yourself, you know, and you're you're carrying a sound and you're you're taking the word of God and you're preaching it through a different vehicle, you know. Yes. So when I saw you, I'm saying, wow. And so it's growing and growing and growing what you're doing. I mean, you're constantly and, and what you're building will last for generations. You're, yes. you're, you're, you're 10 years ahead of most people. And I remember when I spoke to you, you were trying to bring the church up to where you were. And until yes. the pandemic, they didn't understand you. Because they were, they figured they could be in the pulpit and the kids, people in the audience. But when the pandemic came, they needed you. And, and I'm sure this has increased. So the thing of it is, it's important to own it because I believe we're in rebellion when we don't. And I know that's tough. Yes. If we let, if we let this enemy that wants to kill it, and at the same time that it's killing, it's producing pattern one. No foundation. And so even in your organization, you got to be careful who you have in the foundation. Because Jezebel can get in your business. <laughs> Jezebel can get in the church. You know, you need, there are some uh, law firms that have hired and paid staff profits. Because they need to see. So, and 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 you we have to see things from, Noah was no, you know, Noah built an ark to, to, to save people. And so it was a business transaction, you know, and to cut back on some folk. <laughs> so I, uh, when I see you, when I meet, and, and not only that, you draw, you're drawn to apostles and you draw apostles. Watch the people that come around you. Right, Apostle Don? Yes. Willie Coates Jr. installed our church. Okay. Oh, cool. yes. He wasn't an apostle until when, listen, he, that book shook his life. He started reproducing it because yeah. it was a blessing in a way, because let me tell you what happened. If I had been trained by them, I might've been trained out of what I'm doing. Wow. I felt really bad because they wouldn't let us in the meeting to learn and see a lot of us a lot of the apostles today that came under the 1980s training, I'm not saying they weren't trained wrong, but they did not include female apostles, right? So I said, God, I'm out here. I'm ordained. I wish I could have been in that school. But God said, I protected you from that because you mm -hmm. can teach people wrong. He said, I'm a, the Holy Spirit. And so here's the deal that I say now, because daughters out here that get in trouble innocently that are called apostles come under male apostles. I want y'all to hear my heart. There had not been any women generals. And these daughters that are rising up like Bernice and other ones, they need somewhere where somebody can minister to their inward parts deal with the, the, the struggles they have, deal with the depression, deal with the, with the you know, manipulation, seduction. And so God is raising up female generals to not just, I'm not absolute for women, but more women will come to me than men that have been assaulted, that are, that are, that are that just lost. 
but I had to I, I had to put a name on my door so people could find me. I can't walk around here and I plast apostle this, apostle that now, right? I would not, I'm not gonna give the enemy that ground. I had I said this the other day at one of the places we go in business. This guy, he says, I'm too carnal to be an apostle. You know, you know, he heard another bishop say that. So, you know, you know, and you say things like that. You're saying, well, there's a requirement of an apostle. There's a requirement. Why? Because it's foundational gift. People need to be able to build on you. I know people don't want to hear that, but I want to pull down. So any other question, Dr. Bernice? No, ma'am. I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to remove this from the studio so I can see. Oh my God, I got to bring her up. Mary Wesley. <laughs> oh my God, y'all got it. Don't nobody go, don't nobody go, don't nobody go. This woman is the proof of the apostleship. Oh, oh don't you do it. I have preached about Mary. Oh, God. Mary walked in our ministry, but how many years ago, Mary? Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, 20, has it been 20 close to 20 years, right? Yes, yes, and I'm getting older too. <laughs> Listen to this, y'all a 30 year bona fide Jehovah Witness. Walked in the church <laughs> looking for somebody else who was from that persuasion and poked around the window. And she's a witness to anybody that heard me talk about Mary. And she said, I said, hey, what are you doing? I said, come here. She said, ah. I said, come here. What I do? Tell you to sit where? What I tell you to sit? Right next to you on your lap. <laughs> oh, I put this woman on my lap. <laughs> I put my arms around her. Okay. I said, you ain't slept. I said, but God getting ready to give you some sleep. And she hit the floor and started speaking in tongues. <laughs> uh, I've, been miss I've been missing you. And that first uh, year was the first Christmas, huh? Yes, yes, yes. Tell the people how you been doing. Oh, I, I have been just, uh, you know, I've I just been just writing. God has just been dealing with me in the prophetic. You know how yeah. I learned to write that poetry, how I learned to like do that dance and do my flags. So I've just been uh, just writing. Oh, and and I've just been writing and uh <laughs> I don't know. I, I got so I many tablets. <laughs> I just want to hug you. I got so many tablets. I'm, I'm telling you, I got a house full of tablets. <laughs> we got to get it published. Oh, but here's yeah. the testimony of what the power of God would do. And Mary has told us so many stories. Oh, yes. 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 You're talking about that time that... Uh, I was blind, couldn't see, and she just made me put stamps backwards on letters, and oh my God, <laughs> I couldn't even see. <laughs> and what happened? Uh, and you had the dancer there, and uh, and uh, then like you said, uh, just go with the flow. God's going to minister you, and if you obey, and I'll tell you, we were dancing dancing like I could see and we had rehearsed that thing and all of a sudden little by little I could see again Jesus. but he had to blind me like Paul he had to cut my sight out knocked me down and throw me in the belly of the whale <laughs> all at once <laughs> oh, so I'm I so could listen <laughs> so I wouldn't go back I wouldn't go back and I never returned turn from that day. He cut my, my book bag straps off. Hallelujah. Praise Glory God. to God. <laughs> you know, I always look back. That is that is the proof there is, I you know, you check after one year, two years, see if they didn't pull it back into that old thing. 
and you find out that God did a work in her life. Oh, and she went from faith to faith, victory to victory. Glory, oh, yes, oh, yes, God. hallelujah. Oh, God. And yes. we have about how many, maybe three or four people from that faith, and that's to me, yes. was a something a wonder. They yeah. Started the power yeah. of God will supersede any denomination. Oh, yes, yes. You know, I don't bow at them. I had a lady that was, they needed a miracle, and she was church of something. They don't believe in prayer. They don't even have music. And I said, do you want to be healed, or you want to go back to your church? She said, I, I want to be healed. God healed and delivered her. Yes, I don't bow, yes. I don't bow at no religions. You know, yes. God wants to use us. They sure do. Thank I'm God. Thank person God. Up. Who is this? I, I don't know why I can't see down here. Oh, there it is. I got to use my arrow. See, we can actually get 10. Who is that? Who that be? Is that Irene? Okay, wait. Sway. It's Consuela. Oh, my, you're looking like Irene. You know, Stark. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. That's How are you, spiritual mom? <laughs> oh, I'm blessed. We're just having the word of the Lord. Oh, I, it's very timely. It's very, it's such confirmation because uh, the thing that I've been, even just this year, to me, this year has been a year of restoration for me already and everybody has been calling me to minister uh or speak a word so this word is very timely so i think i know exactly what i'm supposed to do but i don't call myself that but you but like you said you got to speak boldly this is the year of, for me to be unapologetic about who i am what i'm called to do yeah. and all of that i've been ministering yeah. in my job because, you know, I'm a healer, so I know that's my gift. And you know that because I was your health minister. It's just crazy that I'm being called to preach. But I was like, I don't need a, to be on a mantle to preach. I can preach where I'm at. But just to have, just to know uh, that that's what I was always called to do is crazy to me. It's just crazy. So I'm just, it's, it's crazy. Because I'm not the one with the hanky in the lap. I'm not that person. I'm not the one with, the, yeah, I'm not the one with the hanky. You know, I'm a little bit bold. However, uh, people always come to me and I always seem to be ministering to them in some type of way. It's just, uh, it's anyway. And you know what? The thing of it is, uh, uh, those of you that are here, do the work. And you know, God will confirm it, but you got to get out there. You got to shake the, this, it, it, while we were asleep, Satan came in and teared. And num many of us have to be stripped from that pattern one. Because I didn't realize how all of my life I had been in pattern one. So as the apostolic began to emerge, I had to make a choice to drop that water pot. Now, there's some people won't come on here because they don't want to identify with what I'm teaching. And I understand that because it's going to disrupt where you are. I promise you. I, when I wrote the book on the apostolic um, the husband and wife team, I, uh, a lady read it out of Augusta. And she was getting ready to marry somebody. And she was already in ministry building. And she went to she, she called me back. She said, they have to read this book or we mm -hmm. can't walk that aisle. Mm -hmm. Now hear me, it's not going to disrupt a relationship. It literally brought my husband and I together more so now than ever because he now knows who he is and who I am. Mm -hmm. And so if people come to me about the convening style apostle, I said, that's not me. You see Apostle Mill. I carry the blueprint. And I've always carried the blueprint. I've had prophecies. And I didn't know what a blueprint was. So when I look at something, you know, just like what Bernice was saying, 
I don't see it from a, a religious eye. I see it from an apostolic eye. Now, years and years and years ago, Apostle Turnell Nelson, who was over the Pentecostal Assemblies, an apostle that he was Bishop Earl Polk's apostle, I think. Or she, he was Miles Monroe's apostle, to show you who he was, that caliber. He literally, I was in New York back in the day, he took me by my head and he threw me forward. He pulled me out of a crowd, <laughs> threw me forward and said, apostolic precision to build and prophetic vision to see now. And he yelled and he snatched me. <laughs> mm. I didn't know what that was, but it was opening up the avenue to see the builder. So when you when you when you read the scriptures now, I pray those of you that are on here, when you look at this Bible, you don't see it as uh, the logos. You see the rhema life of the apostle. You can go in any book in this Bible and see the builder. The I remember you saying um, saying that when you went into my home at first. He's like, you know what? This is your ministry because this is all your books. I don't know if you, if you remember that. Uh, he was like, "You're about health. You're about you're about business. You're about this because this is all you read about." And I was like, "That's true." And the other thing you said that was so wise to me, uh, you was like, "Wherever your frustration lies, that's where your ministry lies." Oh yeah. And I found that to be so um, so true. You always drop uh, good gems on me that I use to this day, and it's just it's it's true. I like that you say it's not a religious because that's that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the dogma because dogma will get you caught up in your intellect. Intellect is out of the ego, but spirit mm -hmm. is spirit. Yeah. So you got to mm -hmm. operate out, out of the spirit, and I, that's that's how I operate. So it may it may be opposed to what somebody's intellect says or how they process it, but I'm gonna give you the truth, and that's that is I don't want to say it's a fear. Because like I said, I'm more bold this year. Uh, like the sister said, I write poetry. I've been starting to read my poetry more and stuff like that. But it's all about edifying us as a people. I'm talking about folk because we need edifying right now. Because people have so many um, idiosyncrasies and ideologies about who we're supposed to be and trying to pin us against one another. But no, yes. it takes... No, we got to come up together as 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 a as a folk so i am i am if when i say i'm bold right now you and this it, it. lions and lambs like you said <laughs> right now i'm a lion well, I'm you're like, yes. uh, excuse me but i got it from you you were my spiritual <laughs> mother so you're talking about apostolic uh i felt in my life i was the plow Everything if, and and you know this apostle. Right. When I put my hand on somebody in health, they flourish. Look at the people I touched in health, and look what they're doing right. now. That's right. You know, uh, I oh, look at. Uh, I was the first uh, uh, one business owner in my family because you know I started with the franchise and stuff That's like right. that, and now uh, my my folks have a uh, uh, business. So I know I have an apostolic um, uh, gift. And that arena, but I know I'm prophetic too because I see stuff, and then uh, then it may be, it may be the next day or maybe years, but I see stuff. And but you have signs too. See, here's the thing. I think we're understanding it's broader. I was yeah. with a young lady down in Suriname, and she was so frustrated because she was trying to find out what she needed to do in the church, and she said, you know, I'm just, a, you know, I'm just here. And all of a sudden she started talking about this hospital she was going to build and somebody was going to invest and she was going to buy this land and she's taking in orphans and she just lit up. I said, that's the apostolic because it's bigger. Okay. When apostles dream, think about this. When they dream, they don't dream about a car and a house and they dream about cities. They dream about things so big that if you told somebody, they're going to say, go back. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I never anticipated being in Europe. And when I was there that third time, they said, shake the dust off your feet from America. God has given Europe. And one uh, of the things, and I said, now myself, I'm praying for America. I am, and I'm not closed. But when I, 
when I go into Europe, it's they're ready to receive this apostolic. They're well, you said it in your name. You called it Global Dominion. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a, a look. I remember uh, now. Look, y'all. 2019. Mark Sharona prayed for me, and I posted and posted. He said, "He said 2020, the joy of ministry is coming back." Cause see, I was I'm, I'll be 70 next year, y'all, and I was ready to just you know you know y'all go on. I'll sit back. Oh my God. <laughs> But God had somebody to pull me and make a demand on what was in me. Here's the thing that I do now is somebody has to make a demand on you. And because you can easily slip back into pattern one. And that's yeah, the same. Yeah. You can't go to sleep until Jesus comes. Yeah. But I have yeah. somebody that says, I just, you know, I was on the phone this morning. I just birthed the church in this city and that city. I need you to come. Okay, because I'm, you know, you're thinking, you know, you're getting a little older and, you know, just so, no. Uh -huh. um, if I have to say, if I have to push you around in a wheelchair, uh -huh. I'm getting knees right. They're they doing good. Uh -huh. But what I'm saying is somebody, somebody see you, Pastor Don. And, and because you got on my Facebook, I'm going to make sure, I promise you. You're not going to, you, your church is going to just, because now is the time for the apostolic. We didn't see what the church did without it. We didn't see what the church did with these crazy prophets. Because when I say crazy prophets, they're prophesying without an understanding of when and timing. Oh, because of yeah. timing. They've gotten into the gift and they're losing the integrity. Y'all hear oh, what I'm huh? saying? Yeah. The connection is going in and out. I know, but you, yeah. you're gonna be. And so the integrity of the prophetic is that we're going around giving people personal prophecies, and they're feeding off that because you can get on here and prophesy. Because when I was even teaching some of the uh, sessions in India, he had asked me at the end if you want to prophesy to him. Well, the word is prophetic. You know, I'm not. Yeah. You know, and and so they they bring people on there and they and they prophesy to people, and that's okay. That's not what I'm trying to do. Mm. I'm trying to speak the prophetic word that will elevate you to doing something, oh, not oh. looking for a prophecy. You're gonna, you know, God's gonna use you. Yeah, He's gonna use you, but you don't know what He's gonna use you because nobody's taught you who you are and yes. creating yeah. an environment. Number two, and last thing. You got to find your tribe and get in your tribe because somebody, I asked the question, who has your ring and your robe? There needs to be an accountability to make certain because we can't build this thing by ourselves. And if you're connected okay. with somebody that's chipping away at who you are, eventually they're going to win because you can't build from an organization that's already established and try to change it. You gotta, you gotta know how to exit. That's good because that's see, that's what I'm saying. Everything to me is confirmation right now. Cause uh, uh, I was listening to uh, TD Jakes one day, and I was like, that is so doggone true. Mm -hmm. He's like, you can't minister to somebody you ain't kin with. Right. So he was like, if if, if you never have financial struggles, how are you gonna minister to somebody who going through financial struggles? And, and come back on top. Mm -hmm. If you've never had um, uh, been through marriage problems, how are you going to minister to somebody who had marriage problems? If you never had addictions, how are you going to minister to somebody who had addictions? That's why you got to know your lane and yeah. then uh, mm -hmm. got, and, and, and minister out of your lane that and you're from. I think you can just refer people when you know, see, the thing of it is this this pride thing is trying to be all things mm -hmm. to all men. Mm -hmm. yes. And yes. the Bible mm -hmm. says we are many-membered body. And mm -hmm. that's for the diversity of gifts, but the same spirit. So mm -hmm. if I got the blueprint and I'm trying to, I'm the electrician trying to do what the plumber's doing, trying to do what the drywall is doing and, and lay the footing on the building. I'm, I'm I'm not going to be affected because that's not my grace. God has given you a wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. He's given you an ability. 
And you need to know where you start and know where you end. Amen. So this is good. Um, we got three more weeks. I want y'all to continue to, to stay here. Why? Because it ain't a one session, y'all. Please trust me. Okay. The minute you walk away, the enemy going to, you're going to find yourself because people going to ask you. Now hear me. I'm not anti-church. I am mm. pro-tribe. And so some things are unfruitful. Find your people. God sends you to a people, not a place. And a lot of us are yeah. wondering in places that is that is <laughs> not and, and praying for something that ain't going to happen because yeah. God ain't initiated it. Yes. yes. I mean, and we're losing here. our promise. We are losing our the focus of our promise. You know, um, the Lord just uh, was after me the other day was saying, you got to recover back your promises. You got to recover oh, back your, 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 your vision, what I put inside of you. You know, you have lost your vision and you have just made somebody else's your vision. But I gave you... Uh, the building anointing. I gave you the uh, the insight. I gave you the discernment. But they are also you have let people uh, that didn't understand what was in you shut you down. Come on, Mary. So now I gotta pull you up out of that dark place and bring you back into the recovery of the light to remember who you are, not who they say you are, but who I say you are. And some of that out of pure lack of understanding. Because yes. if, if, I, if I don't have a pattern and I start trying to, a blueprint, and I start trying to build something, I, it hasn't been initiated and been signed off. They're going to come out and condemn it. They're going to put a stop work mm -hmm. on that building. Yes. It has yes. to be approved. The question I ask tonight is, can we build God something that he didn't initiate? Is it okay? Mm -hmm. It's been yes. happening. It's, it's like genetically modified fruit and, and every, it's so much mm. stuff now until if you try to find some grapes with seeds, you got to go away somewhere to get them. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Because we think yeah. if it's a lot of something is right. Well, that's all. This is the only church we know. This is the only thing we know. You know, yeah. and you come in there and you got you it, and it's grieving to an apostle. Yeah. what we call yeah. ministry. Because, yeah. listen, we're weaker than we've ever been. Yeah. We said, mm. say, well, you're going to die of something. Well, you know, <laughs> it don't matter. You know, the devil is busy coming in, shooting up the church. You know, yeah. we don't have no power. And mm. then, so we don't have no power. We have gimmicks. Mm -hmm. We call yeah. that, quote, yeah. unquote. And so yeah. the average person today don't want to have nothing to do with it. And that generation now, is the generation we didn't leave the bones, we didn't take the bones of Joseph. Yes, mm. yes. we left yes. them in Egypt, and so they're out here yes. trying to figure it out. Yes, and yes. they're going about establishing their own righteousness. Not yes. a, you know, because we the blessing of the Lord is transgenerational. Yeah, I, when I was in the Netherlands, when this young church. I apologize to them for my brothers and sisters at my age. They didn't leave them nothing but power and a seek for money. When they saw that ministry could make money, they dropped the power of God and they went for the money. Yes. Yeah. And I told them, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that people come to you with a bunch of mess in the mm. name of kingdom and abused you, assaulted you emotionally. And made you, I mean, it. I don't want to get into some of the things that I've seen and passed through. But I'm here to tell you that those of you that are hearing this word tonight is accountable to God to make the shift. When I said, when I posted on the this year, what is God saying this year? He said he's going to undergird the pattern, pattern builders. 
Somebody mm -hmm. probably said, what is a pattern builder? What kind of mm -hmm. man is that person here? God is, let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is going to go with those who are building according to the pattern that he show you. Yes, yes. Well, we talk about I'm blessed and highly favored and and, and yes. because it's a thing. I'm blessed. I, I'm a kingdom. God, yeah, because stuff that, that's what I'm talking about with the dogma. People just say stuff, but they don't have the meaning. And, yeah. and then the word curses, you always said what what the, what goes in your ear gates and your eye gates? The yeah. gates. Take care mm -hmm. of the gates, the uh -huh. entryway. Yeah. Feed yeah. yourself yeah. good food. That's that's then, that's kingdom. That come out. Uh, cause, so I'm I'm seeing that. Like I said, uh, um, Pastor uh, Sharon, you always just gave me so many jewels that I absolutely live by. Uh, cause cause I I know they're from the Word. I always test stuff with the Word now, so I don't I don't hold no man and say they infallible. We all have mm -hmm. our 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 thing, right? But I listen to the Word. Right. Oh, and oh. one thing, and so test the word. You know the fruit by the fruit. Test the word. Test the word. Yeah. So yeah. what yeah. you plant is going. What you plant, the seed you plant. That's why that seedless stuff is crap. Because you got to have a seed. Yeah. yeah. Everything starts with a seed. Yeah. What you plant, you will reap. You said if you if you want trust, so trust. You want love, so love. Whatever you want, yeah. so it. You it'll, 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 it'll come made. back. There will be seed time and harvest. And a harvest time. So you yeah. have to trust in that. Because in this day and time, uh, like you said, so many people are manipulated because yes. of the because of what they're letting go through their ear gates and eye gates and the stuff. Because they this artificial intelligence, and that's a whole nother conversation. Uh yeah. is is as having people um uh worshiping something that's not organic. Let me tell you this. You're the one that really taught on health, but here's the thing that we're having to do. Narrow is the way, and very few people will find it. Because people feel like if I do this, if I attend this, if I do this, it is acceptable unto God. And I was thinking, the Lord said, I will never destroy the earth with just fire with mm -hmm. the fluid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what is happening now is the church is destroying itself with its own yes. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And so what yeah. we've got to do is we got to cry loud, lift up our voice like a trumpet in Zion. Show my people their transgressions. Yeah. And the house of Jacob their sins. And what we have to do is give them an authentic word yeah. because yeah. I've watched and I say this I watched the plumb line or the split between the remnant the 7,000 that haven't bowed and those that ran into a political firestorm and get sucked up on a political thing looking for a dollar and power and it's separated so now it's an opportunity for those who have not bowed to Baal See, God told Elijah, he said, listen, Jezebel is after me. He said, they tore down the altars. He said, listen, Elijah, I know you're a prophet. You got the company of a prophet, but I got 7,000 who have not bowed to Baal or kissed. Them. What is Baal? Baal is this kingdom of Baal worship for stuff. Yes. Uh, and the that. thing of it is, God is going to give you the wealth, the heathen for thine inheritance, the uttermost, but he will not, he will not. Every time the children of Israel went into captivity was because of idolatry. Mm -hmm. and idolatry, it, right now, what we're talking about it, uh, intellectual, what's that, intelligence? I met a young lady at one of the conferences that, that actually works in that field. Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. This is because this is because the church has not built the kingdom of God. We've been trying to go into a Babylonian system and change it through legislation. What God yeah. told to do through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I yeah. and I I know people say, well, you know, they believe in this and they believe they're the legal. 
listen, this Babylonian system is coming down. But the mm -hmm. kingdom of God will reign and rule forever. And so we got to latch on to the kingdom of God. And oh, I'm not saying, we, you know, but hold loosely on the dollar paper and all of this stuff. And oh. know who you are. Because oh. people, you know, saw where they could get money. They oh. saw where ministry was money. Yeah. And this is all over the world. Mm -hmm. But there are those that are taking the the altar by the horns and they're praying 24 seven. The persecution in India has created a hunger and thirst for God that we don't know anything about. And when I go on at seven o'clock tonight, it is five 30 in the morning. They are praying 24 hours. And I told the apostle, I said, listen, I'll take this horn and I'll pull this, this here, but I need you to do one thing for me. I'm not asking you for a dollar. I'm not asking you for money, but I'm asking you to assign some intercessors. Why? Because when you start preaching what you all are experiencing tonight, Satan's got all of these folk, this waving this artificial, waving this, or, uh, what it, it's not organic, it's um, this foreign food and all of this stuff in our face. And we're saying, well, look, this is all we have. This is all the ministry we have. But I promise you, God is raising up a people because we have got to leave something with the generation coming that's not a twerk and a quirk. Are you going to say that? I'm telling you right now, all we're doing is twerking and, and stuff, no power. <laughs> if never walked in there, we wouldn't know the difference. Why? Because we yeah. eat. we've been eating this uh -huh. non-seed food, it don't have no seeds in it. That's the end of it. And I remember you telling me when you were a uh, prophet, Consuela, I remember when you were looking for seeds back years ago. Mm -hmm. You were genetically altered. Mm -hmm. Trying to get seeds and searching for seeds because you saw what it was going to do to the body of Christ. You saw that it was trying to take us out prematurely when God promised 120 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. and so there's a ministry there mm -hmm. to, to keep us here. The enemy wants us to leave off and not finish what God has called us to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. but God mm -hmm. raises up these apostolic prophetic gifts like you that was born. He said a little uh, with bodily exercise, profit little, but you bring the little. Mm. It profits. So, y'all, we can yeah. stay on here all night. <laughs> <laughs> but we will be back on to Wednesday. I'm looking like I'm on here every day, Monday, Tuesday. I do a private class, and then Tuesday night. Tuesday, I was on with Adrian. Y'all need to go back on my Facebook and listen to that girl, Lord Jesus. She talking. She coming out. These folk have been in the back burner. Folk probably done discounted them and stuck them in a corner somewhere, told them they was, you know, but God is releasing these voices. And some of y'all yeah. on here, they hear your voice. I want y'all to... Mary, I'm going to bring you on because I want you, girl, you got the word of God. All that stuff you write, you need to speak it. <laughs> so I'm going to pull you on one of them Tuesdays on one day. I'll call you. Okay. <laughs> there's a deal, Cassandra. Lord, I pray tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. Mary, pray and pray us out. But I, you know, I could be on here. I love this. Oh, Jesse, Lord. my son, darling, I mean, Don. Is it? She's faithful from Pakistan. Bless you. I love you too. Yes. Zion, Global Aces. Bless you. Love you. Love you. Love all of you. I just want to acknowledge you all. Yes. That are on here. Some of you, I can see you. But I bless all of you that are out here. Uh, we're just, we're just, we love Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And the life. Hallelujah. No the Father, but by Him. Yes, we, Lord. For that reason we bow our knees. So tomorrow I'll be on with India at seven o'clock our time, five thirty in the morning with them. Pray, pray for Apostle Sharon. 
and Apostle Mayo. We'll be celebrating 50 years. Oh, hallelujah. In the beginning, but I'm excited about it. Love it. Yes, yes. In there, then probably went to sleep. He was cooking some chicken in the air fryer. That's why he came in here and said, Oh, I love him. I thank God for us coming into our season. And uh, we bless you all. Mary, take us out in prayer. We will see you all, listen, next Wednesday at 7. Build everything according to the pattern, you all. Please don't deviate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As we leave tonight, we, we're leaving with a gracious heart and a heartfelt mind set that we are builders. We know who we have been called to be. Let us keep this force in our, our heart, our mind, and our soul as we go up and learn more about building macho pattern. Lord, let no weapon form against us. Let us keep coming in and learning and keep receiving. And as we receive, let us pour out to those that need to hear this, to hear this shift. Let us shift. Let us shift and recover the sights of the blind and unplug the ears of the deaf and open up the heart to receive this new yes. word, the rhema word. As we say yes. good night, like though we lay ourselves down to sleep, we pray that your angels guard us around us and thank you for Apostle Mel and Apostle Sharon for just putting this word in their belly. And we lift them up to you in the safety of your arm, Lord, and say give it, give it to let us send it out and let those who were called to hear receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the name. You could have kept going with that. We need to get some of these all night ones going on. My God. Hallelujah. My Mary, my baby. Hallelujah. You need to come sit on my lap again, huh? To God be the glory. To God be the glory. God bless you, Consuela and Mother. Who is Mother? Me. Oh, okay. I'm looking to the right. And my Apostle Bernice, keep following, keep pushing. Build in the name yeah. of Jesus. I bless you all. Good night. Yeah. Good night. See you next Good time. Night. Love you all. Love you.